Okay, right. So, this video is going to be to answer your questions in relation to UC1 and UC2. Uh, there were a lot of questions on that video about what's best gear to take, how should I do this, how should I do that. That wasn't what that video was about, so they're not getting answered. And a lot of those questions have already been covered in previous videos anyway. However, if a Q&A is something that people would want, because I used to do them on Facebook, uh, we can schedule a live Q&A through um, YouTube anyway. So that's some of the people want, then I'll look into setting a date up. So these questions are in no particular order. And so I might jump around a little bit and go back and forth. I've just made a note of, of what people have asked. So one question was about would I make any changes? in what I've done, would I do it differently, would I take steps differently, knowing what I know now. And that's a difficult one, because knowing what I know now, I wouldn't know if I hadn't have done what I did. So if I hadn't done it the way I'd done it, I wouldn't have gained the knowledge that I've gained about how I operate. Now, obviously... As everyone's aware, or most people are aware, my kidneys are a bit knackered. But they were knackered before I started. The projects didn't help. Uh, and they've probably sped up, well, I think it's pretty much a foregone conclusion that they've sped up the degeneration of my kidney disease. But I already had the issue. Um, probably the biggest one, UC1 went quite well, to be fair. It overran. It probably ran about four or six weeks longer than it should have done. But I was pretty happy with the power to weight condition balance I had at 365 pounds. I felt good. I could move. You know, in general, I wasn't bad. Um, in UC2, I should never really start the project because of the issues I was having with nerve impingement. And that resulted in the project being a bit of a catastrophe from start to finish. Uh, I was on the drugs for far too long a period of time. Uh, and I also hampered the recovery from the injury, which I have now recovered from. Um, so I suppose really the bulk of the mistakes came with UC2. Um, UC1 was almost enjoyable. Uh, it was hard. But I was performing well. UC2 was a constant battle against immense pain. And I'm not just trying to... Honestly, I've never felt pain like I felt in UC2. Um, I fucked up with the drugs. I took them for far too long. When my back originally went, it was just as I was going on cycle and starting to build up because I tapered up. And I was thinking, you know... When it went, oh, a week, it'll be fine. Two weeks, it'll be fine. So I didn't come down. I wasn't at full dose. Probably running at about a couple of grams. Um, then it wasn't getting better. So I came down. And then it felt like it was starting to improve. So I came back up. Because I was always conscious of the time that we'd committed to this film, me and James. And that, uh, you know, there was some pressure to get it done. Um... I probably was less driven in certain ways on UC1, or sorry, on UC2, than I was on UC1. Uh, UC2 definitely became a chore. As I got bigger and heavier, everything got harder, including training, um, where there was a lot of enjoyment in UC1, and there was a lot of reward to risk ratio going on. In UC2, it was definitely very much the other way. And it was mainly just me being a stubborn dickhead uh, and um, an inability to quit that sort of kept me going. But even I had my limits. Um, someone also asked, did I have any joint issues? Actually, none. No. Uh, it's something I've never really had problems with. So the weight didn't cause me any issues joint issues, but the weight caused me issues with movement, definitely. Uh, that size is difficult to live with. Um, it impacts a lot on your life in ways you probably wouldn't think. Transport, type of transport, 
I couldn't fit in one plane seat. I couldn't fit in one bus or train seat. I had to change my car to a Range Rover because I couldn't fit in my car anymore. If I tried driving smaller cars, it was extremely painful for me after about half an hour. Um, so things like that. Um, fitting in life. Fitting in public toilets. Uh, clothes. You know, everything had to be made. My jeans were made, my shirts are made, my suits are made. The only thing that I bought off the peg was T-shirts. Um, so all sorts of aspects like that. And obviously the commitment to eating the food has a massive impact on your life. But the physical size, yeah, you get tired easy. You're tired all the time. Everything's an effort. Uh, and you've got to double check everything you move around, move in or sit on because it may not take your weight. So, uh, what weight did it get difficult? Well, when I was 300 pound, so I started a project at 306 pound, uh, believe it or not, according to a seven point caliper test, I was, uh, 10.5% body fat, 11% body fat, somewhere around there. Now, the issue was that at this point, my kidney function was already compromised. I didn't know this. I'd been to the docs, I'd gone for checks and they kept telling me that it was normal for me. So there were no issues. I couldn't understand, and one reason I started the project was I, I, I had been dying for a comp and I just burnt out, and I couldn't understand why I'd prep before, so I knew how hard prep was, or could be, and I was that sort of region of things, and yet I wasn't getting the condition. I was. I was just holding water, and the more stress my body got with the diet, and the more my kidneys were struggling with the situation, the more I held water. So I was getting leaner, it just wasn't showing. But it was that frustration that born this project in the first place. As I say, you know, 340 was difficult, 360 was difficult, um, but then 360 got more comfortable. 380 never and above, 400, 415, those weights never got comfortable. But uh, I, I, I got comfortable at 360 and I felt okay at that. Um... And like I said, that was about the weight, 360, 365 was the weight, weight where I had the best sort of fitness, power, weight, strength, condition, everything rolled into one. Um, someone asked me about my post-cycle therapy. What did I do post-cycle? Well, basically I did Scully's Power PCT with the addition of some aromacin, tapered down, and I extended it slightly. Subs did I use? Um usual culprits really udca um nac uh tried burgering for real but for a while but didn't bother with it i used to use matador uh from anabolic designs ascorbic acid vitamin b complex creatine arginine leucine uh carb powders whey protein powders well, that was citronine um Arginine, I've already said that. Um, and that was about it. Uh, a lot went into uh, IntraShake uh, because I was running insulin pre and post. But the subs were pretty regular, really. Nothing particularly fancy. Someone asked about cardio. <laughs> no. <laughs> Didn't do any cardio at all. Brushing my teeth was cardio at 400 pounds. Uh, but I didn't really get back pumps either. Um, I mean, bear in mind that for a large amount of the project, I was in immense pain in my nerves in my back and my leg anyway. Uh, but I didn't really suffer back pumps. Um, someone said, what can I currently maintain naturally? Answer is, I don't know. I'm still finding my feet here. Uh, strength was coming up nicely. Then it plateaued. Then recently I've not been so well. And my kidney meds have caused me a few problems. I've had a lot of digestive issues. I've pulled my diet right back, changed that all around, and things are getting back on track again. But at this point, I'm not sure what I can maintain. I don't know what size I can maintain. I'm not that bothered. As long as it's gradual, I think I'll cope with it fine. Uh, I'm never going to be small. It's just not in my genetic makeup to be small. So, uh, But I had issues definitely off the back of one about losing size and I definitely had issues off the back of two but at the same time 
I didn't because of the kidney problems. But what really pissed me off was when I went into hospital, I was 415 pounds. When I came out of hospital, I was three, 360. And it was like, hang on a minute. I've been through all that. Bear in mind, I came out of hospital with abs as well, which was a bit weird. But I've been through all that to drop 65 pound of water or 60 pound or whatever it was, 55 pound of water while I was in hospital to actually be not really much further on than I was at end of UC1. That was a bit disappointing. And like I say, I was stronger in one than I was in two. Uh, high trend, yeah, because I got up to 1.5 a trend at one point. Now, I've never really suffered big issues with trend, so I didn't get the night sweats so much. I didn't really get the, the coffee and fits, uh, and I didn't, really, I didn't get the mad dreams. I did get an element of coldness. I did get an element of, of um, distance. Um, but it's difficult because of all the other pressures that were going on. Uh, I mean, at this point, I'm feeling pretty shitty, to say the least. I'm carrying a huge amount of weight around. I'm tired all the time. I'm sore all the time. I've got a ridiculously punishing diet regime for eating every hour and a half. Same with my injection protocols. And I've got this nerve pain on top of everything. So it didn't particularly make me a happy bunny. Um, but I think I can honestly say that, that I've never really had anger issues as such from gear use. I've had a little bit, uh, but really generally my grumpiness comes from I'm not training well, my training's not going well, or my diet, uh, particularly a restrictive diet that's where I start getting pissed off. And that's where I get my bad moods from. Not so much from the drugs. Um, long term, because of all, I mean, obviously I've been looking into a lot of brain chemistry stuff and shit like that. And yeah, I do think there's some long term issues. My memory is terrible. Really terrible. And my ability to focus is very, very poor. Uh, I have a bit of a monkey mind now, and, and I can't, I can only focus on one thing at a time, I get easily distracted, uh, and I definitely don't think I have the mental focus that I used to have. Uh, that's probably compounded, I mean, I don't know if you know, I have a condition called Durkham's disease, it's now really, I get a large amount of lipoma growths. it does affect my sleep patterns a bit, but it's also supposed to affect my cognitive and memory function. So, I could say, oh, it's that, it's that, but I don't think it is. I do think it's the nandrolone-based drugs I've used. I've always been a heavy nandrolone user, um, primarily Deca. Um, Trent I only used in UC1 and UC2. Not a fan of it, to be quite honest. Um, but I do think it's left me with some impaired cognitive function, definitely on a memory point of view anyway. Now, how did the family cope? Mm. And my wife. Difficult one. One, they were all pretty supportive. And obviously one went quite well. Um, my wife used to get sick of the food impact. She'd get sick of people staring. She'd get sick of people pointing when we were out. This became particularly noticeable when I got up to the sort of 390 range. When I was around the 390 range, I was still big. But the water retention had ballooned to the point where I had such a massive distension. So I did look big. Yeah, my arms are 26 and a half inch. And, you know, I, I caught quite an imposing figure. And as a result, I did create a stir wherever I went. Um... She got sick of the negative. She got sick of uh, people having opinions or judgments just based on the way I appeared. Very, very defensive of me as my wife. Um, but in one, she, I think she, she, she managed with it. When one came out and the hating started uh, or the negativity started uh, and I got a lot, a lot of criticism, um, she she didn't take that well at all. Neither did I to start with, to be honest. I had to learn to cope with that and learn to switch off to it. She still struggles with that now. 
uh, I don't think it affected my children too much because it was just what they've always known. Uh, but um, two did. Two was a different game because through most of two, I suffered in a lot of pain. I couldn't walk. I was wheelchair bound for a while. I had three hospitalizations through pain management from my back spasms. And we didn't have answers. The NHS and National Health Service over here in the UK couldn't find the problem. And what they were thinking it was, it wasn't at all. Uh, and I kept getting spinal blocks, which were ineffective. Uh, and, and in general, it just, that was, a, she struggled with that. She struggled to see me in so much pain all the time. She struggled to see me as effectively flogging a dead horse. Uh, and it had a mass. She got to the point where she didn't want to go out with me. She didn't want to go anywhere with me because she was, one, worried about my back wouldn't cope, two, worried about people's reactions to me physically, uh, and three, also got sick of seeing me eating out of Tupperware tubs. Because you've got to remember, I'm eating every hour and a half in one. Two, I actually ate less. Because of the water retention becoming problems, I was convinced I was gaining fat, so I was cutting my diet back, cutting my diet back, cutting my diet back. And I wasn't, that's it. It was, it was water retention. So she was quite vocal, um, middle to end of two. She doesn't all back with my missus. Uh, and she would quite often stand there and say, you're a fat bastard. You look a fat mess. Sort it out. Um... Obviously, she had concerns um, when things started to go awry, as we both did. Uh, and, and it was a bit of a mutual decision to stop. And she probably pushed for it sooner than I accepted it. Um, uh, and it took me a while to accept it. I was so, to a degree, in denial with it. But... Uh, you know, we uh, we talked, and she put me in my place more than one occasion. So, food intake. Well, you see, one I went up to ten thousand cals a day. All generally, apart from one post-workout shake, was all real food. Uh, a very bland diet. Basically, I used to slow cook minced chicken and eat rice, and that was pretty much it. Porridge oats, a few eggs now and again, some protein powders, but that was pretty much the consumption of my diet. It was about eight kilos in raw food a day. Um, towards the end, I was starting to struggle. In two, I actually ate less. Uh, I tried to look at more liquid intake, didn't work, but I actually ate less. But I ate less more based on the fact that I was trying to manage what I thought was ever-increasing fat, and it wasn't, it was water. Um, but the food was very, very bland. I mean, it literally was that. It was steamed rice, slow-cooked chicken, slow-cooked beef, a bit of salt and pepper, and that was it. Nothing else added to it. And I used to just shovel that down. I didn't eat for flavor, pleasure or taste or anything. I used to just shovel it down. Had a cheat once a week or once a fortnight, uh, but quite often the cheat was more just a case of not eating because I was that fed up and sick of eating. Aside from the drugs... Didn't get a lot of what you'd class as your traditional sides. I got sides. Um, a big one was CNS fatigue, uh, adrenal fatigue. Um, um, had big issues there. Uh, in general, my central nervous system got very, very run down. And most of you are aware of the video where I've got a face like a hamburger. Uh, that was adult rosacea brought on effectively by stress of my central nervous system which is what the drugs were doing to my system um liver function was pretty good throughout heart function was pretty good throughout so like i said though i did get acne it wasn't through the normal route which is dht stimulus of sebaceous glands it was uh, through stress through central nervous stress i suffered some heavy metal issues um but a lot of the sides were Size based. Come on, if you're coming, Ollie. I'm going to go in there. Yeah, right, um, but not so much the sort of traditional sides, if you know what I mean. So, obviously, water retention was a big issue. Um, 
that was down to renal function and, and obviously drugs as well. Well, boss is here. She's waving at me. All right, I'm carrying on. Uh, anger. Did I get angry? Um, let's say her main anger issues came from shitty workouts, poor productivity, looking like a fat mess, and being in pain all the time. Um, I would have said UC1, I was probably not so bad, though the diet used to get on top of me a bit. But UC2, I struggled, without doubt. But I said, there was a lot of contributing factors to that one. Um, generally speaking, when I've used gear, it's actually sort of calmed me down and chilled me out. So I generally haven't had, though there has been times and there have been certain drugs. I remember taking an oral Sinastron. It was an oxy derivative. Bloody hellfire. I wanted to kill everybody on that stuff. Um, the next question is, how did it affect my sex life? Made it awkward. I don't get enough. Uh, the wife says she don't get enough. Um, it made it uncomfortable for her, I think. Uh, certain positions were no goes. Uh, and obviously, being that size and, and being that weight and everything being such an effort, it's not really at the forefront of your mind. So it definitely impacted it. And there's no denying that. But it, it still did go on. Any regrets, health, etc. Oh. I don't know, is the honest answer. Uh, uh, in some ways, yes. In some ways, no. If I hadn't have done what I've done, would you be sat here listening to me now? And I feel I have a very... Very might be being a bit egotistical. Uh, I feel I have a productive life. I feel I have a life now that that counts for something. I feel I'm actually benefiting people, um, and I'm being positive. Now, would I have had that impact if I hadn't been such a mad twat and tried to get to 415 pounds? God knows. Um, I don't really have regrets on one. One, I think, went as planned to a large extent. Uh, Health-wise, it's impossible to calculate how much, if any, acceleration has been done to my kidney issues. I think it would be stupid to say that it hasn't, but to give it a percentage or a number, how long's a piece of string? Um... What I do know is that the kidney issues were present before I started and that they were misdiagnosed. Um, Long-term health issues. I've yet to find out, I suppose, is the answer there. Uh, I think what it has done is, daft as it may sound to you guys, but it's made me aware of a balance Whereas previously, I was very, very size orientated and nothing could check that. You know, nothing. I'd always had that drive to be absolutely massive. I'm not that bothered anymore. Um, Been there, done it sort of thing. Um, So I think I have a a healthier balance mentally on on what I'm looking at. Um, Obviously, I'll have to deal with whatever my kidneys throw to me in the coming years as, as they throw them at me. And if it ends up being dialysis or transplant or whatever, then it, that's what it ends up being. Um, they've not changed function-wise in the last two years. They go up and down, but they don't seem to have any real sustained change. So I don't know, is the answer. Uh I am consciously bringing my size and weight down to some degree, which is why I'm focusing on a strength challenge as something to drive for rather than a size thing. Um, So it is a difficult one. I I regret some of the things we went through as a family. I regret 
my wife having to see me suffer so much and some of the bouts of back pain had me laid on the floor in screaming agony for hours drinking bottles of morphine and just not touching the sides uh i regret some of those elements i regret being foolish over my back injury and not just walking away giving it time and sorting it out uh, but at the same time, if I hadn't endured that, gone through that, I wouldn't be who or what I am now. And I don't really mind myself. I'm quite content with me. So, um, you know, our lives and our experience are what make us the people we are. So I suppose in overall, no. There are elements and there are impacts on other people that I would rather have not have occurred. But, but I don't think I particularly regret where it took me. It was a journey I had to have, I feel. Uh, someone I talked about doing it naturally. What you may not realize is that I trained from 15 to 19 and I was a staunch natural. I competed as a natural. Uh, and the reason I went on gear was because I thought I'd got as far as I could. Now, bearing in mind, I'm 45 now, so we're going back a lot of years. But um, at that time, I felt I'd gone as far as I could naturally, and as, as my knowledge would tell me. And that's why I went to gear, uh, to see how much further I could go. I, I trained hard, and I did train hard. And that's one thing no one can ever accuse me of. Back in those days, Jesus Christ, I trained hard. Um, um, but, um, you know, I, I pushed it. As far as I felt, I could go naturally. I had no understanding of diet, uh, and obviously, retrospectively, looking back now, if I had the dietary knowledge that's available now, yes, I probably could have gone quite a bit further uh, and developed a lot better physique. Um, but at the time, I felt I'd done what I could. So I did have a period of being natural, quite a long period of being natural. And even when I broke from training and I came back, I trained natty for two, three years before I started on gear again. How did we film it? How did it start? All right, well, what happened? Long story short, uh, the background between me starting the project and filming are two different stories. So the first story is about me. Um, I opened a gym quite some years ago in Carlisle. I had uh, Alvin Small, among a few others. I think we had Sean Dinosaur Davis. We had uh, Dinosaur Nutrition, Andy Bolton, and Mark Felix come up uh, for the opening. Um, and me and uh, Alvin got talking, and Alvin started asking me about competing, and I had just made a list of excuses, uh, which he quite rightly pointed out, that's all they were, was a list of excuses. And he sort of taught me into giving it a go. So I started dieting. Uh, it was a long diet, a couple of years. Um, and I got down to um, 306 pounds, and like I said earlier, was somewhere around the 10, 11% body fat on a seven point caliber. But I wasn't seeing the results of my efforts in my body because my body was starting to hold water. Didn't know this at the time. Um, so uh, I got frustrated. I tried DMP, felt like shit for two weeks, gained a pound. Uh, I was getting very, very frustrated. And I was getting very burnt out. Now, having done a show before and actually got in condition, I had a rough idea of work low to results for me and that wasn't stacking up at all now in the meantime i went to body power i was sponsored by ssn on the time i was working the ssn stand and i got talking to the guy that was running ssn in the uk and we were discussing rich piano and and how successful his appearance was considering his lack of competition success and he was with Newton at the time. And so we discussed doing a UK similar sort of version. My next book, me being very, very open about drugs and everything else. <coughs> uh, now, SSN had a brand called Muscle Junkie. And the rough idea was that the Muscle Junkie brand would support me. And that's what I'd be affiliated with. He went away to head office. Uh, discuss it with them. They uh, shitstormed the idea and said, no way. I wouldn't be associated with a drug user. At this point, I was sold on the idea. Because I also thought, I was starting to get into the harm reduction at this point, and I thought it would be a really good way to um, 
show both sides of things. You know, everyone talks when they're online about how good the gear is, how good they feel. No one talks about feeling crap. No one talks about stomach upsets or, or having to get up at three o'clock in the morning to do a shot. Stupid shit like that. So, you know, I'm like, you know what, we'll do it warts and all. So I sold on the idea. Uh, so I set up this YouTube channel and I did my very first video. And I set up a Facebook page and that was it. That was about as much promotion as I did. And we plodded along and we plodded along. And then I started talking more about gear in general, and then I started talking about specific drugs and bits and bats, and the channel started to develop. And then I was very active in uh, a forum in the UK called Test Muscle at the time. And Simon, who ran Test Muscle, had contracted James Grealish to do a promotional video, which me and James did uh, with a couple of others. And then at the end of it, James did an interview with me over a Jody Marsh documentary, and that thing went massive. Well, relatively massive anyway. Uh, that was a huge success. And that was pretty much the end of it. We did a little few of the bits and bats together. We did a training series for Test Muscle, which I believe is on their YouTube channel. And off the back of that, in, in, in thanks for that, James recorded my back session, Dark Places. Um, and then out of the blue, he just rang me up one day and said... Uh, how do you fancy making a film about what you're doing? And I just went, no, nah, all right then. Fair enough. I didn't have a fucking clue. Uh, and he said, well, there's a problem. And I said, so what's that? He said, you'll have to lend me money for petrol to get up. I'm skint. So I did. And he came up to mine. And we started filming. And I just, I don't know. For the day, from day one, I just trusted James. Uh, by UC2, I trust, I, I do trust him from his filmmaking, trust him with me dog from a sexual point of view, he's a pervert, but, um, from integrity and professionalism, trust the bloke implicitly. He filmed, well, I mean, you saw in the film, the stuff over my mother, um, you know, he filmed me going to hospital, he filmed my kidney failure, he filmed all sorts. And he treated it all with a great deal of respect. And I had no input on editing. I just trusted him. The guy is, is incredible at what he does. So we, three, so UC1 was filmed over a few days. Uh, and what we had to do was um, not create scenarios as such, because it is, but we went to Meadow Hall, sorry, went to Trafford Centre, to get people's reactions. So it was staged in that sense, but not in the sense that anything was actors or set up. It's just, we had to create a few scenarios because obviously we had to show the journey in a short filming period. With two, we planned it from beginning to end. So I had a GoPro at mine, which I'd keep doing little filming snits on. And then James would come up periodically. And if there was an actual event going on or something, we'd go to it together. And obviously we went over to Denmark together and a few other bits and bats. So, uh, two was, was very scheduled and it was postponed and we nearly quit it several times, both over my health issues, um, and over some things that James experienced as well. That film nearly broke the two of us, uh, in one way or another, the mental strain on James with the editing and the massive amount of footage he had to go through. We're talking thousands of hours. Um, it was a massive strain on him mentally and physically for that matter. And obviously the project itself was a massive strain on me physically. But that that is effectively how it happened. You know, it was done on a shoestring, uh, the first one. The first one financed the second one. Um, and, and we just, we had no idea. When we put it out there, we just didn't know how it would be received. And the strange thing was it got a lot of hate. Well, I got a lot of hate. Uh, but key people, a um, couple of the big podcasts in the States, uh, loved it and supported it. Matt Meinrod, uh, Adam McVeigh, uh, they loved it. They supported it. They interviewed me, and, and it was great. And I've always just, I think one of the, the keys of it was, I just let James film. So if it was shit, it was shit. If it was good, it was good. He just filmed it. There was no 
oh, don't do it from that angle. Oh, oh let me put this extra weight or any of that bullshit. It was just, it was just a fly on the wall thing. Coping with the negatives and goals in the future. Well, I think I've dealt with the negatives to a large extent. Um, I don't have any hang-ups over size now, though I did do. I did do. Initially, coming down was difficult. Losing the strength has been difficult. Uh, going from a five-plate bench rep in a six-plate bent of a row and you know regularly squatting seven plates to go to where I am now has been difficult, yes. Um, the size thing hasn't bothered me as much as I thought it would. It did initially, but I seem to have adapted to it quite well. Um, I get negatives from people, uh, and that always hasn't been easy to deal with. Uh, some of the online criticism has been particularly vicious. Uh, and I've had various aspects of my life questioned uh, and my family commitment questioned. Uh, I've been told I'm a child abuser because of what I've done. Um, all sorts. Absolutely all sorts. And people even turn around, I don't fucking know you're still alive. You know, most people expected me to be dead, I think. Um, goals in the future. Well, obviously, I've got this strength thing in September which is more just something to occupy me training-wise with. Um, I wanted to develop my harm reduction business, um, and I've got the public speaking stuff that I'm working on as well. So I suppose that is pretty much the future. There is no plans for UC3. Me and James have talked about doing something else, but we want to do something new and cutting edge. And we think that a UC3 would just be a rehash of what's already there. Well, I'll never say never. But I definitely don't want that intrusion of a camera in my life again. Um, two was particularly difficult to watch for me. Um, I don't think my wife's even watched it. Um... It was a painful watch. To watch you fuck your life up in that sense, in HD, is a bit of a surreal experience. Uh, the impact of size on my life. I think I've covered this already, so I don't know I've written that down again. Um, but yeah, you just don't fit. Uh, I think that's the easiest way of putting it. Uh, how much gear and how much food? Right, now, i get this right. You see one, I went up to 5G. And then came back down to 4.5G. At one point, it was 1.5 gram of trend and 3 gram of test. But it did go down to 1 gram of trend and 3 gram of test. Previous to that, it was DECA. And then at one point it was a gram of deca 500 mig of MPP and three gram of test. In UC2, I ran four gram or three and a half, three and a half to four gram. But I also ran 50 IUs of insulin a day and I ran at one point about 25 IUs of pharma growth a day. Um, so they were the drugs. Um, Food-wise, I've already said, UC1 was 10,000 calories, UC2, 7 to 8, and then it diminished to 6, as I thought I was getting overly fat and trying to deal with the situation. Um, regards, you know, I don't know what to say about them, really. Um. One, I enjoyed. Two, I hated. Two was sheer pig-headedness, determination to succeed and fulfil a goal. Uh, the good thing about that is that I no longer have that desire. Um, I can't watch two. It really, no. Nah. It's like watching your biggest mistake. It's not my biggest mistake of my life. I'm going out of the worst. Uh, but, you know, it is like watching a train wreck to some degree.
what have I learned? I've learned I can endure a fucking lot of pain when I have to. Um, I've learned that as human beings, we are capable of some very positive and some very negative shit, even when we think it's positive. And I've learned that, you know, definitely my perception of me and my perception of my values changed. Um, and what, in one, I wasn't, one, the drugs was an experiment, okay? I pushed the doses eyes to see how I'd react. They weren't the driving factor. The training was the driving factor. The food was the driving factor in one. In two, it wasn't. In two, it was the drugs. The drugs were the driving factor. The drugs were the most important thing. And that's wrong. And I fucked that up massively. Um, I lost sight. My training was less intense in two. My strength was less in two. Yeah, I was dealing with injury issues, but that's not an excuse. Um, because I know myself that I got far too drug orientated, far too drug focused. I didn't look at, all right, how can I improve my training intensity? How can I improve my diet? I looked at what more drugs can I take? Which that wasn't the approach in one. The approach in one was how do I train harder? How do I eat cleaner and eat more? And the drugs was pretty much in the background. There were a lot of them, but they weren't the focus. Uh, two, they were. And that was wrong, completely wrong. I learned that uh, I had a very skewed body image at times. And I learned that the drugs actually played a role in that. The, the drugs altered my personal image. They altered how I felt about myself. They altered how I viewed myself. So there's definitely some brain chemistry going on in there. Um, you know, I didn't really have major hang-ups. I mean, how can you be 360 pound and feel small? Come on. You know, I, I'm in no way pro quality, but dressed, standing next to him, I made some of them boys look small. <sighs> that have destroyed me even deep off season if I was even in contest shape standing on stage. But um, physical dimensions? Yeah, and I was actually quite surprised at some of them who moved away from me because they didn't want to be seen with me because they wouldn't allow their photographs to be taken with me just because of my physical dimensions. But I didn't see that. I had a very twisted view of myself. Um that's gone now that that's a lot more balanced but it did seem that in two particularly uh the high level of drugs actually caused my self-image or my my perception of my self-image to be getting more twisted um i don't know i mean i went into two thinking i'd learned lessons from one and yet I failed to apply any of them. Uh, I was talking about them, I was conscious of them, but I never really did any of them. I felt that I'd gone to the drugs too long in one. So then why did I spend over a year on them in two? You know, stupid stuff like this. I couldn't walk away, I couldn't say no. I struggled with that. I was gonna finish this fucking thing if it killed me. And though it, wasn't close to that it, it definitely felt like that at times um so they were definitely an experience uh they taught me quite a lot about myself probably taught me more about my weaknesses um and and how even as, as a, someone who I, I would feel was reasonably educated in these matters can lose sight and how an obsession can become very destructive. Now, in a lot of ways, I'm probably lucky to come out the other side as well as I have. And I now like to think that I can use that experience to help others. Um... I do feel it was something I had to do. Um, it always been an itch, and it was always going to be an itch. And in a sense, I feel complete for doing it. 
in some way. Um, which I suppose sounds a bit weird, but but uh, I just felt it was something I needed to do. Um, you know, um, I don't really know how to describe it. It's it's weird. Um, maybe it was just the whole experience was was strange. Definitely tested me. Definitely tested people around me. Um, but I think I come out of it the better person. Wife probably doesn't agree. No, she thinks I'm an arsehole. Yeah, stop nodding your head, woman. Go make me a sandwich. Um, but no, you know, it, it is what it is, effectively, and I don't think there's much more to it than that. Um, where's my sandwich? Excuse me, I'm going to have to beat the wife. Um, but no, you know... Um, Okay, I apparently have to stop boring you to death because I'm a boring git. So, uh, on that note, I will stop. Plus, I've actually got to go see somebody anyway. So, um, there you go. I hope that's covered the questions. It has been a long one, actually, yes. Um, probably take a day and a half for this to fucking upload now on my slow internet speed. But uh, I will catch up with you soon. Take care. All the best.